Hi, welcome to Med Manus. Often, med students find some words very difficult, like tram track, spike and dome appearance, C3 nephritic factor. I'm very sure that you'll be very clear at the end of this video. In the previous video, we saw about renal histology and nephritic syndrome, right? So if you understood those videos, this video is going to be very easy for you. Let's go into the session. Before seeing my sketch here, I want to give you some basics. What are cytokines? Cyto means cell and kinds that is related to movement. So the cytokines are nothing but the peptides or say proteins that are secreted by inflammatory cells. For example, take B cells or T cells that secrete lymphokines or monocytes which secretes monokines. So actually they are the signaling molecules that bring changes in other cells. Let's see more about that in our immunology sessions. Now going to our filtration barrier in our glomerulus. So I want to make sure one point very clear again. So alvin is so small that it crosses the membrane barrier and gets into urine space. But what keeps this alvin and the smaller proteins in the blood is the charge barrier. So this charge barrier is so important to keep the alvin and other proteins in the blood space. If this charge barrier is lost, this albumin gets into the urine space, resulting in decreased oncotic pressure. Let's move on to the sketch now. So when there is excess inflammation going on in our glomerulus, these cytokines deposits on the glomerular basement membrane and destroys it and also destroys the podocytes. This leads to massive loss of proteins in the urine, which is greater than 3.5 gram per day. So the proteins like albumin or antithrombin or the gamma globulin gets lost in the urine resulting in the clinical features. So the loss of albumin results in hypoalbinemia, which results in decreased oncotic pressure, resulting in generalized edema and ascites. When you lose gamma globulin, that is your antibodies, it results in infection. When talking about the antithrombin, take this big picture. So tissue damage going on every time in our body, right? So coagulation is a process constantly going on in your body. In order to keep this coagulation check, you have anticoagulation system and the antithrombin is one of a system. What if you lose the antithrombin into your urine? You get hypercoagulation. The patient also presents with hyperlipidemia and hypercholesterolemia. The mechanism is poorly understood, but you can take like the liver in order to compensate for the low albumin in the blood, start secreting the lipids and cholesterol in the blood. So leading to high lipids and cholesterol in your blood. When this fat gets collected in the tubules, it gets a shape of a cast and is removed in the urine as fatty cast. If it takes some epithelial cells along with them, you can see oval fat bodies. Under polarized light, you see a cross pattern. This is Maltese cross. So these are all some findings in the urine. I hope you are very clear about the pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome now. Now we'll see some diseases that have nephrotic pattern. Number one, minimal change disease. This is the most common nephrotic syndrome in children. So what happens here? The cytokines that is secreted excess from the cells get deposited and also damages a food process of the podocytes that leads to the loss of albumin in the urine. If you take the electron micrograph, so this is the basement membrane, this is the capillary and these are the podocytes. You can see there is no food process here, right? So this is called effacement of a food process. So this is the light microscopy. It is absolutely normal. So we call it as minimal change disease. Let's move on to the second condition. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So you get sclerosis or thickening of a segment in the glomerulus. The primary cause is idiopathic or secondary to HIV or heroin use and sickle cell anemia. So for next time, if you see a patient with HIV, heroin use or sickle cell anemia coming with a nephrotic syndrome, always think of FSGS. So in the light microscopy, you can clearly appreciate the thickening of a glomerulus in a particular segment. In the EM, it is same as the minimal change disease. So in both the cases, MCD and FSGS, there is negative immunofluorescence since no immune complex involved. So coming on to the next condition, membranous nephropathy. What is the name saying? Membranous. So the glomerular basement membrane is thickened due to subepithelial deposits. 
So here you can see the sub-epithelial deposits like this. So this leads to the thickening of a membrane also damages the podocytes. Note that this is the most common nephrotic syndrome in adults and it has got a very poor prognosis. So what are the causes? These are some of the causes I have listed here. So in hepatitis B and C or any solid tumor, say lung cancer, SLE, drugs like NSAIDs and penicillamine. In SLE, most commonly have nephritic pattern that is diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Remember, the most common cause of renal failure in SLE is due to this disease. We've already seen this in the previous video. If it has nephrotic pattern, it should be membranous nephropathy. Students often confuse in this picture spike and dome appearance. What is that spike and dome appearance? Let us see my sketch here. So this is the basement membrane and these yellow things, right? So they are immune complex deposits. A stain we use here is silver stain. This silver stain stains only the basement membrane and not the immune complex deposits. I am repeating it again. The silver stain stains only the basement membrane and not the immune complex deposits. So what if you use silver stain to stain the glomerulus? You don't see the immune complex. So you don't see the immune complex here. So you see a spike and dome appearance. So this is the spike dome spike dome spike dome appearance in the glomerulus let me zoom this image for you okay look at here this arrow here you can see some black spots right so that is the spike and dome appearance i hope now you are very clear about this now in the electron micrograph you can see the immune complex deposits like this in the light microscopy picture also you can see the highly eosinophilic areas. So this is membranous nephropathy. Now coming to amyloidosis. This affects so many organs in our body but note that kidney is the most commonly involved organ causing nephrotic syndrome. So now what is amyloid? A little background basic about the amyloid. Our cells produces proteins, right? So the proteins may be intracellular or extracellular or intramembranous. Sometimes these proteins get misfolded. Okay, for example, say this is a protein, it should be folded like in this way. But due to some factors, these proteins are not folded properly and these proteins will be destroyed in our proteasomes. So this is a proteasomes. So these proteasomes destroys the misfolded proteins. But due to some genetic factors or uh, say aging, these proteins are not destroyed by the proteasomes and secreted as misfolded proteins, these pink areas, right? So these are the misfolded proteins that gets deposited in the extracellular space and compresses the cells causing pressure atrophy. This damages the cells. Using Congo red stain, we can see the amyloid deposits in the glomerulus. So these are the amyloid deposits. And this destroys the filtration barrier leading to nephrotic syndrome. If you see under polarized light, you can see apple green color. So these are all the amyloid deposits. Coming on to the next condition, diabetic glomerulonephropathy. When the blood sugar is so high, it sticks to the blood vessel wall without the help of enzymes. This is called non-enzymatic glycosylation. So this damages the membrane leading to loss of proteins in the urine. Also, these proteins get deposited on the vessel wall and thickens the blood vessel wall. This is called arteriolosclerosis. One extra point remember here, the arteriosclerosis first affect the efferent arteriole which results in increased GFR. This results in perfiltration injury. And over time, it also affects the afferent arteriole, resulting in decreased GFR. When you take the light microscopy picture, you can see some nodules like this. This is called Kimmelstein Wilson nodule. Why is there nodules? Because the high blood sugar also damages the mesangial cells. So the mesangial cells proliferates and damages the glomerulus. Coming on to the final condition, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. In this condition, you can see tram track appearance. What is that? This is a tram track. What is the relation between this pic and MPGN? So you get subendothelial or intramembranous deposits, right? So that damages the membrane. So the mesangial cells surrounding the capillaries proliferates and splits the basement membrane like this. So in this sketch here, so you can see the basement membrane here and this is the proliferation of 
the mesangium this splits the basement membrane into two so what if you use silver stains so this appears like a tram track with silver stains this is a tram track i'll zoom this image for you okay so this is the basement membrane and this seems like a tram track right so that's why in membrano proliferative you can see tram track appearance this is due to the proliferation of mesangial cells that cuts a basement membrane into two i hope now you are very clear about this there are two types in mpgn type 1 and 2 in type 1 there is sub endothelial deposits sub endothelial deposits and in type 2 you have intra membranous deposits this is type 1 and this is type 2 in type 2 one important additional point I want to add. So in this condition, we have C3 nephritic factor that is increased in the blood. What is this? To understand this, you should have a basic idea about our complement system. So the complements are proteins that are secreted by the liver into the blood that participates in first line defense or say innate immunity. There are three pathways in this complement system. One of a pathway is alternate pathway. In this pathway, you don't need any antibodies to activate the complement. The complements are in the inactivated state, that is, when the A and B portion of a complement are combined, it is inactivated state. These must be split into separate sessions so that it gets activated. Here, the antigen is going to activate the C3 complement and splits it into A and B. Now, this C3B activates another protein and splits into A and B. Now, this protein B and this C3B combines to form C3B protein B, which is called C3 convertase. This is the most important point you need to remember. And this C3 convertase activates membrane attack complex through a series of other steps. So this membrane attack complex destroys the cells. In this disease, we have C3 nephritic factor, which is an autoantibody that binds with the C3 convertase. This aggressively activates C3 convertase. So you get increased membrane attack complex here. So that destroys the tissues. And this is the cause of glomerular damage in type 2 membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis. Also, you have decreased C3 complement. Why? Because of this overactivation, it excessively uses the C3 to make the membrane attack complex. That's why you get low C3 in your blood. Okay, now to summarize, I hope you are very clear about the pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome now. So excessive inflammation of glomerulus happens in both the syndrome, but the primary cell responsible for the damage is different. In nephrotic syndrome, you see neutrophils and here it is cytokines. And also the damage to glomerular filtration barrier is so high when compared to nephritic syndrome, that's why you get massive proteinuria. So you lose albumin, you lose your antithrombin, you lose your gamma globulin. So we talked about so many diseases, right? So always keep the minimal change disease and focal segment glomerular nephritis in one section in your mind and keep membranous nephropathy and membranoproliferic glomerular nephritis another section. And Amyloidosis diabetes comes under systemic diseases that have nephrotic syndrome type. I hope you are very clear now. If you have any doubts or topic suggestion, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next session. Thank you.